Hello everybody, this is Rani, your go-to Canva guru. So uh, today I am back with a new tutorial and I'm going to show you how to simulate a masking effect with Canva. So um, let me show you what I'm talking about. See this visual right here? So this is what I call a masking effect. I'm masking part of my visual with a shape or with a special um, layout that I want to put on top uh, of another photo. Let me show you other uh, application of this technique. So today this is what we are going to learn in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's start uh, from scratch with a new document. So for this we are going to start with a presentation document like this one and then we need to find a photo that will be our um, background for this visual. So let's find a photo that we like and if we want to recreate the same kind of effect we, uh, we should find something which has vibrant colors for example like a sunset or the galaxy like this could be interesting let's see let's let's search for a sunset okay something with plenty of nice colors this could be interesting let's let's use this okay so the next thing we are going to do is to stretch this a little bit so it fits the the height of the page like this and it needs to be centered very good all right next we are going to find the the shape that we want to use for our mask okay so for this we need to find a frame so frames are located under the elements tab under frames so right here and canva gives us a bunch of different frames so it's really entirely up to us to find a frame that we like. For example, this one could be a cool effect. Something like this. Okay, it needs to be smaller because it needs to fit on the design. So something like this could be nice. All right, so let's try to to find an interesting spot in our picture so with the let's let's center it and see what comes up okay so next um, we are going to change the ad, like change the settings of our photo right here so if we click on it and then go to adjust we can for example desaturate this photo so we get rid of all the colors. Uh, so that's one way of doing it. We could do like this by reducing the saturation of our photo. And then we are going to go back to this photo. So this one right here and drop it in our shape right here. Then we double click on the shape or you, ju you can just click once and then go uh, push on the crop button, the same effect. And then we are going to adjust this photo to exactly the size of the photo in the background, the photo that we are using for our background, like this. And hit enter. And now you can see we have simulated a shape effect right here on our photo, which is pretty cool. Okay, let's duplicate this and let's try to apply another technique, not the this kind of shape but we will be using the letter frames because this could give us a pretty cool effect so the letter frames are to be found under frame in the, under the elements tab okay go to frames and you can basically do this with any kind of frames you like so this is pretty cool uh, you could play around with for example a phone like this or a computer uh, or even a three part like uh, paint brush like strokes like this the possibilities are really endless or something like this could also be cool but let's uh, let's try the letters and write a simple word like we are going to write dream d r e m e a m sorry <laughs> dream all right and 
one thing we need to do is reduce the size of these um, letters. It should not be bigger, like the word should not be bigger than the photo in the background right here. So that's important. So one thing we are going to do, we are going to reduce the size of these uh, letter frames, but and I want to reduce them all at once. So they, I'm exactly sure they are, I'm sure that they are exactly at the same size. So in order to do this, I'm going to select them all. But you see, if I do this, I am also selecting the photo in the background. So I could deselect by holding shift and clicking on it. But what I want to do, and it's easier, I will click on the background photo and then I will lock it like this. Now I can select all my letters and reduce their size. Okay, so about this size. And now I just have to reconstruct my word like this okay this d will come later okay dream i like this okay i have my word I'm going to make sure it is centered like this maybe reduce it a little bit more like this dream okay this looks good now all I have to do is apply the same technique with my original photo. So this one, letter after letter. So let's start with this letter. Okay, I'll drop it here, double click, and then I have to adjust the size of my photo inside the letter so that it matches exactly the background photo. So to this, I'm just going to focus on uh, the size first and then I can move with my keyboard arrows so that it matches exactly. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent super precise but the more precise you do it the better it will look at the end. So next letter like this and I'm going to speed this up a little bit because it is the exact same process that we are going to repeat for every letter right third letter and you can see already our design taking form it looks pretty cool would have been nice to be able to access this yellow part of the photo as well like more in the in the lower part of the photo because it gives a nice warm feeling but then you have to decide this before because once you start doing this, you cannot move your word anymore because otherwise it will not match the photo in the background anymore. So this is something you have to very carefully think at the beginning of this process. So me here, I'm adjusting my A letter and then one more letter to go, the M letter. Okay. So maybe I didn't choose the most interesting part of this visual of this photo. I could have like, I could have included a piece of the house in the background or even the, um, the, the brightest part of the image right here. But basically here is what it looks like. Then we can play again with the background photo, uh, go to the adjust, maybe give it more vignette or maybe more brightness like this maybe looks more interesting. So this is basically what I wanted to show you. This technique simulates, it simulates uh, the masking effect that you could maybe produce in Photoshop or other um, graphic software like um, um, visual creation software. Uh, so if you don't have this uh, option proposed to you by Canva, you can still try to reproduce it. So. Uh, there are other applications to this. You don't just, uh, you can do other things and just play around with the saturation of the photos. You could blur the photo in the background or you could uh, literally draw a little, little like uh, portion of your visual in another color. So there are many things you can do uh, with this technique, but this uh, nicely simulates the masking techniques. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. Show me 
your creation using this technique. If you're watching this video from our uh, Facebook group, please post your creations in the comment section. And if you are watching from YouTube, I invite you to subscribe to the channel so you will never miss uh, our tutorials. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning this new trick with Canva. I am Ronnie, your go-to instructor if you want to learn to design with Canva. And I will see you in the next video.